Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at embedded smart objects in Adobe Photoshop and we're going to start with a quick pop quiz. And the pop quiz question is a smart object is embedded as A, a PSB file, B, a PNG, C, a JPG, D, a PDF file or E, all of the above. Now if you're like I was a few days ago, you're probably going to answer A, that it's an embedded PSB file. In actual fact, E is correct. Every single one of these file formats is a potential file format used by Adobe Photoshop when you are saving an object as a smart object. So let's swing across to Photoshop and let's have a look at the situation. So I have a file here and inside it are four individual smart objects. I'm going to turn off the bottom ones and we're going to focus on this one. This one is a PSB file. When I double click on the smart object thumbnail, you'll see it opens as layer 11 PSB. So that's behaving exactly as one might expect a smart object would behave inside Photoshop. But this one was embedded as a PDF file and when I double click on the Smart Object thumbnail it opens up in my PDF reader. This is an embedded PDF file. This next layer was embedded as a JPEG file and when I double click on the Smart Object thumbnail you'll see that it has been embedded as a JPEG. It's not a PSB, it's going to behave bit differently to a PSB file. And then this last one I saved it out as a ping file and I embedded it back into Photoshop as a smart object. Double click on this and you can see that it is a ping file. So from what I've been able to ascertain the reasoning for this is that if a file format does not support layers and when I saved out this PDF file I did save it out without layers. It was a flattened PDF file. If your file format that you're embedding in a Photoshop file is a format that does not support layers then Photoshop is going to keep that file format as the format for your embedded smart object. So let's have a look and see how I actually embedded these images because that's part of the problem and it also gives us a potential workaround. So let's repeat one of these imports. So what I did was I created my file. So I just went File New and created a brand new file. And then I placed my images. So I used File Place Embedded. And then I went and selected my file. In this case, I'm going to select this JPEG image and I'll click Place. And when I place it, it is placed as a JPEG image. So it's not a PSB file. So anytime you use File Place Embedded to place an image in a document and if that image format does not support layers, in other words PNG or JPEG or a flattened PDF, then your image is going to be saved inside your Photoshop file as that file format. So it's not a PSB, it is that native file format. Now there is a way around this and that is to first of all open your file. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this file and then I'm going to take this layer over to my image file that I'm working on. So I'm just going to drag it into the image file I'm working on and I'm going to drop it into place. Now it's coming in at a really large size and of course one of the benefits of having a smart object is that you can resize it without degrading quality. So what you want to do at this stage is not resize this image to fit the way that the last one was. What we're going to do is we're going to make it a smart object first. So I'm going to right click it and choose convert to smart object. Now if we have a look at it, it's a PSB file and it is its original 3000 odd pixels wide. So I'm going to close that down. Let's go back to where it was embedded and at this point we're going to the move tool. I'm going to press Control T and Control 0. That's Command T and Command 0 on the Mac and I'm just going to scale it down. So I can do that at this point once it's inside my file and once it's made into a smart object it's still going to be that larger size file. 
So when I double click on it, you can see it's still it's 3000 pixels wide, but inside this document, it's only about 1800 pixels wide. So let's have a look and see what happens if we resize it before we save it as a smart object. So let's go back and get this image. Let's just drag and drop it into our working file. It comes in really, really big. We want it to fit in the file. So we're just going to scale it down. I'm going to position it pretty much over the top of all the other images here. Click the check mark change it into a smart object. Now let's double click on it and now I have down the bottom of my screen here showing on the bottom bar the size of the image and it's 1627 by 1082. So by bringing it into this document here, just dragging and dropping it and resizing it before we make it into a smart object, we're losing that image size. So you'll want to bring it in make it a smart object and then scale it if you need to. And then the smart object itself is going to be kept at the size that's important to you. Now at this point you might be thinking what would happen if in one of these images that I've placed embedded, what happens if I rasterize it and then save it again as a smart object? So let's just turn all of these off. Let's go and get our image again, file, place embedded. We know it's 3000 odd pixels wide. Let's just click place. Comes in as an embedded smart object file. Of course, it's a JPEG. We already knew that. Let's go back to our master file here. Let's right click and let's rasterize it. And then let's turn it into a smart object because we know when we do that, when we bring an image in and have it as a standard image layer and then convert it to a smart object, it becomes a PSB. So it is a PSB, but down the bottom, you can see that the size is all wrong. It's been scrunched up. It's only 1600 pixels wide. We're not going to have that wonderful ability of being able to scale it back to its original size because by bringing it into the image, rasterizing it, the process of rasterizing is, is converting its size and that's permanently in the image layer. This is tricky and somewhat confusing stuff. I'm singularly unimpressed that this is happening and I am a little bit concerned to make sure that you realize that it's happening and that you're making good decisions when you're planning to use images as smart objects. So one of the things that I think this is going to be really important for is people who are trying to solve the problem of there not being a bulk print in Photoshop where you can print the same image multiple times on a sheet of paper. Let me just quickly show you. I'm going to file new, I'm going to print, and I'm going to choose a letter size piece of paper in landscape mode and just click create. Now, if I want to line up images for printing, what I could do is do file place embedded. So let's go and get a different image this time. So it's a JPEG. It's coming in, it's being placed embedded as a JPEG image. Not a problem, maybe, maybe not. I'm going to alt drag a duplicate away. And if I was assembling this to print this image multiple times on a sheet of paper, I would be filling the sheet of paper with this image. So. I'd be making big ones and I'd be making little ones. I'm just alt dragging them away. So assuming that we've sort of filled our sheet of paper pretty much a la children's school photos and we've gone ahead and saved this and then printed it. And then we decide we want to change it because we're going to put a different photo in here. We already know that these are copies of each other. So all we have to do is double click on one of them and replace the image. So what I'm going to do is go and get a different image. So let's go and get this JPEG. I'll click place. Now we've got all sorts of problems happening here because this is an embedded JPEG it has multiple layers in it. We know that JPEGs cannot store multiple layers. So I'm just going to close this as we would. And we're asked if we want to save the changes. We're going to go yes. And here is the issue. We can't save it back as a JPEG image because JPEGs can't have multiple layers. So what we could at this point do is in the temp file on my computer, I'm actually going to save this as a PSB file. So I'm just going to click Save. So now it's converted to a PSB file, but note that the layout itself hasn't changed. So let's go back and see 
it's just not working. The embedded file is a JPEG. It's not the one that we just made. It's like, this is so wrong. It's such a big problem. It's behaving so badly for us. So at this stage, we're left with the problem of if we made a layout like this, how are we going to solve the problem? Well, I'm just going back to our embedded JPEG. I'm going to place the file that I want to use in its place. It's coming in as a smart object. I'm going to just rasterize it. And then I'm going to get rid of this old background layer. So I'm just going to drag and drop it onto the trash can. Now we have a embedded file that is just one layer. Let's see what happens. I'm going to close it and click yes. But again, Photoshop saying something wrong with this. Photoshop will not save it back as the embedded JPEG. Well, the solution to that is to go back to this layer and make it a background because JPEGs have background layers. So we're going to target this layer and go to layer new background from layer. And now it's a locked background layer. Let's see what happens. Close the file, save it. Yes, thank you. Exactly what we wanted to happen is happening. So the short answer to this is that it's probably better not to use place embedded. If you want to convert something to a smart object, either open the file itself or open up the file you want to put it into and open it up and move it across inside Photoshop, but don't use Place Embedded. Now let's just go back to that original file, which is the one here, and this is a JPEG. And if we wanted to make this a smart object, at this stage, we could just right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. Inside here, this is a PSB file. So just be aware that Photoshop is treating these embedded smart objects so differently if you use the place embedded command. So you'll want to be aware of how Photoshop is treating embedded images converted to smart objects depending on how you put the file together. This would be particularly important for somebody who, for example, was setting up layouts, multi-image layouts that you can easily replace the image in because if you're setting those up with embedded JPEG, then they're not going to work the way that most people think that smart objects work. Now, this isn't new behavior in Photoshop, but it certainly is a pretty nasty eye opener. So I hope this video has gone some way towards explaining what's happening and giving you some options for either checking to make sure your file is working the way you expect it to work because you know that it might not, or a way of developing a file in a different way to make sure that it does work as we expect it to work. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator, and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.